Hey everybody, Dr. Moser here. So we're going to be diving into something today that I've been basically researching a lot more of. Uh, for those of you who have followed me, I'm really passionate about cancer. And so what we're going to learn in this hopefully quick video is some tips and some tricks and some lies that we may have been uh, misled with from the normal medical community. Now, where I get this, this fire, this passion from, especially when we're talking about breast cancer is because every once in a while my wife and I will like to watch some crappy television just to wind down the head a little bit. We were watching this show for two seasons. It was great, great humor, made us laugh. It was a great thing. And then all of a sudden season three came out and they got breast cancer. And then whenever they were in the waiting room with the diagnosis of breast cancer, they asked the specialist, the top oncologist, what she would do if it was her case. And, and she said, what I would do was have my, my, chest removed or my breast removed faster than you can even say it. So the girl was like, oh, I trust you hook, line, and sinker. Just remove them. We'll get some nice implants. We'll be good to go. So what will happen is women will get misled and they'll be told, hey, we can take them off. It's safer for you to take them off altogether, even if you have the BRCA gene or whatever the, the reasoning is behind it. And they're going to get you set up with a nice pair of implants to upgrade you to make you look even better than what you looked before. And all their goal is, and what the research has shown, is all the goal is to try to make them feel better about themselves in terms of their physical appearance after the surgery. So it's not to mention, and it doesn't mention, all the side effects that can happen from that. So, so what causes breast cancer to begin with is going to be inflammatory response. We have different type of receptor positive cancers, whether it's estrogen receptor positive, progesterone receptor positive, uh, negatives, and then you can have a triple negative, you can have a HER2 there's all kinds of different variations, but basically a toxic lifestyle is going to be one of the things that's going to build and promote breast cancer. So when we talk in our office about inflammation, inflammation is one of the most detrimental things you can have that happen to your health. So let's just rewind this and use some logic whenever we're talking about this particular type of situation. So say, for example, you're going there and you have yourself some breast cancer and you go, the doctor says, hey, we need to go in, we need to do some radiation or maybe they want to hit you with chemo or lumpectomy or whatever it is. And what they're going to do is basically come after you with some very, very, very invasive procedures. So if inflammation was one of the reasons that caused your breast cancer to begin with, what is going to happen if they go in with their tools and they cut you open, they stress you out, they're going to thicken your blood and it can increase your risk of heart attack just from that that knowledge that you're going to be getting operated on. So even if you make it past that and you don't have a heart attack and die, you go through, they cut you surgically. And what's going to happen when they cut you surgically? It doesn't matter how phenomenal the doctor is, they're still slicing open your skin to be able to remove your breast tissue. And what that's going to do is cause an inflammatory process. So for those of you who have done any research on cancer, and when we have an inflammatory process, what is that going to do to that localized area? Think about if you sprain your ankle, what happens? It blows up like a balloon. It gets red like my shirt. So if we have that type of reaction happening after we slice you open, what that is going to do is lead to a process called angiogenesis, which more or less causes more blood flow to that localized area. So if they did not remove 100% of that tumor or got rid of all of those cells, what can happen is new reestablished blood flow and more angiogenesis and more nutrients can go to that breast cancer to make you more and more and more toxic because... You did not get breast cancer because you have breast tissue. That would be ridiculous if anybody ever told you that. You got breast cancer from a toxic lifestyle, years and years and years of buildup. So we have to make sure we understand the underlying cause before we jump ahead and go through surgery. Now, so if we get past the inflammatory spot, yes, uh, Jennifer, exactly. You're going to have more trauma associated with it, and that's, that's a no-brainer. And that's one of the most important things to understand when you're going in with surgery is and even if you get the diagnosis of cancer, what the research shows you have, I believe, is a 12.6 time increased risk of a heart attack within the first two weeks of diagnosis because you're so stressed out that stress is going to raise your cortisol. It's going to make your blood thicker, your fibrinogen, your clotting factor is going to go up, and you have a higher risk of a heart attack. So, again, if you make it past that point, kudos to you, but remember what you're doing when you're getting cut upon. Okay, so let's say... We go through, and we're still going through this process. We get cut, they start to remove the breast tissue out. Now, when we have a tumor, a tumor is a phenomenal phenomenon that happens in the body where our body is smart enough to say, hey, we have a ton of cells that are not corresponding the way that they're supposed to. They're growing out of control. We need to get them under control. What their body does is actually causes an eggshell, more or less, or a tumor to form around those cells to try to sequester them to make sure nothing gets out. So that way, even though the tumor is growing, it's all held within that tumor. 
So if you go and you get a biopsy, you're poking through, you're breaking through the barrier, you're cracking the eggshell and letting more cancer cells flow through and metastasize to other areas of the body. If you get a lumpectomy, the same thing, you have the risk of not getting the entire tumor. You can recirculate and cause metastasis to other areas of the body. And then we keep going through with that and we get a full mastectomy and we get one removed. Well, what do they typically tell you to do? Well, if you get one removed, you might as well get the other removed. So a breast that may not have had breast cancer to begin with, but maybe it had some cells, some distant cells that were ready to turn into breast cancer. You rip that off. You now create inflammation. You create a toxic environment for that breast cancer to now grow. It was just in the right now it's potentially in the left and just because you get your breast tissue removed does not mean that you will not have breast cancer i just want to make sure i'm nice and clear with that just because they try to remove the breast tissue doesn't mean that that happens you still have breast tissue around the area you still have areas where you can get um, receptor positive cancers from having previous breast cancer now another thing that they try with you is they'll put you on tamoxifen which they found they should stop doing that is it stops your risk of breast cancer, but what it does is it deflects the estrogen down to your reproductive organs so that when you can get uterine cancer or reproductive organ type cancers. So the, the approaches that they have set out for somebody diagnosed with breast cancer, scarier than hell. I'd rather have breast cancer than get any of the treatment that they have out there in medical society. So what do we do? So we get diagnosed with this and you go through, you have whatever it is, uh, a biopsy, then they say, okay, it is cancer. And that, so they're gonna do a lumpectomy or they're gonna give you the option for a double mastectomy. So they're going to cause massive inflammation of the body. They're going to cause angiogenesis. And the research also shows that if you have any distant sites of metastasized cancer cells, that removal of the breast tissue, sometimes that tumor is actually keeping those other cancers at bay. And when you remove that circuit board, if you will, if you remove that messenger from that breast tissue that says, hey, keep at bay, boom, all of a sudden you get cancer growing everywhere in the body and you have no idea why. Your doctor's got all of your breast cancer, but I don't understand why it came out and went somewhere else. Well, let's just use our brain, let's use logic. Cancer cells don't just stay and hang out in one area. It's not like you have a, a complete grid built around your breast tissue to stop it from going. That's what the tumor was trying to do that you removed. So they go through, they reconstruct, and then they go ahead and whether they do a nipple sparing surgery or they, uh, they, what's called like a flap surgery, or they do an actual implant um, procedure, what they're going to end up doing is basically, they're going to put, we'll start with the, the flap. So flap is basically, they'll take some chunk of fat, whether it's from your stomach, usually it's from your stomach, and then they'll put it in the breast tissue to try to make and mimic um, breast tissue. The reason they try to do that is because they're learning that normal um, implants, saline, whatever it is, whatever the construction is, you're putting some foreign stuff in your body and that foreign material is triggering autoimmune uh, diseases in many, many, many women. And not only that, but you're getting conditions called breast implant illness and I've had patients who have had that in the past. So you're getting that stuff put in there, it's already inflammatory, it's already causing more inflammation, so you cut yourself, inflammation, you put in new tissue, inflammation, if we have any leftover blood uh, supply going to that area, it's going to be heightened, going to those cancer cells, which means more cancer growth is going to come about. Also, you're going to have issues because you remove the portion of your body. They're finding out that they have a decrease in sensitivity, a decrease of function down in the, the areas where they actually remove the fat and place it into the breast tissue. Now, one of the reasons, another one of the reasons why they're trying to do this surgery is because they're finding out not only do the implants cause um, autoimmune disease or heighten the a risk for cancer or toxic uh, breast, breast implant illness. But what it's also doing is when they go in and they try to put you in with an implant, what it can do is actually damage or desensitize your nipples. And that's why they try to do nipple sparing surgeries. But even when they do that, the, the rate of success for nipple sparing is not very good. Now, why do I say that? Why do I bring that up? Well, if you're getting these certain things taken out and you're getting new ones put in, and you no longer have a sensitivity to your nipples, what that can do is decrease your oxytocin release, which is like your, your sexual, your feel good, your happy hormone that women produce. And so what can happen is if you have a sexual partner and you guys are trying to have a sex life after breast cancer or after you've had a double mastectomy or after you've had implants, that can actually decrease your sex drive can decrease and so what can happen is hormonal issues where we're like, I don't know what's going on, I no longer have a desire or if you do have the desire, a lot of the times women will be more dry down below so it will be a lot more friction and it will be a lot more uncomfortable for them to even engage in sexual activity. So when we're looking at the grand scheme of things, 
Chemo is not going to do anything and cause more, more harm to the, to the damaged tissue. Removing the tissue is going to cause more inflammation. Putting in an implant is going to cause more inflammation. Putting in fat tissue is going to cause more inflammation. And then overall, you're going to feel like crap afterwards because you no longer have that sex drive. You no longer have that connection between you and your spouse or your significant other. So when we look at this, we're like, well, is it worth it? Does it work? No. The research shows that double mastectomy does nothing to actually decrease your risk of reoccurring breast cancer or increase your survival rate. So what was the point for you to get your breast tissue removed, even if you have a BRCA gene or even if you have the BRCA mutation, which is actually the one that can cause you to have an increased risk of breast cancer, there are very simple natural things that you can do to, again, stop that mutation, turn it back to normal because all genes are like a loaded gun. They're harmless unless they're put into an environment where they actually express themselves. So fix a toxic lifestyle. Again, you did not get breast cancer because you have breasts. You got it because you have a very toxic lifestyle. So now let's rewind that a little bit more. I have a couple comments before I dive into what can you do naturally to help you out with this. Um, let's see, dairy plays a huge role in breast cancer. Yeah, so so Jennifer, great, great point there. So when we're having uh, conventionally raised cows, they're getting put on different growth hormones. They're obviously inflammatory too. Uh, you can have an increase in yeast production too because a lot of, actually a lot of people will find out that breast cancer can come from um, abnormal bacteria or even yeast because yeast and uh, yes Jennifer I was just gonna get to that with my special part um, so yeast can cause you to increase your intake for sugar that sugar can cause increased conversion of aromatase pathways from testosterone to estrogen and if you have a breakdown in your phase one or phase two of detoxification of your estrogens whether it's an MTHFR issue or comp T issue or maybe just your liver is just bogged down from years of wear and tear you're gonna be increasing your risk of cancer so so what you want to do is basically try to nurture that and yes watch out for the ingredients in your deodorant that's going to be one of the number one things that you need to address watch out for the deodorant the number one spot where they're going to find breast cancer when they find breast cancer is going to be in the upper lateral quadrant which is right next to the armpit why do you think that that is when we sweat it's a normal detoxification pathway that takes place where we take bad stuff from here we get out through the armpit and we're done with it so instead, we're using these um, these antiperspirants or these deodorants that either the antiperspirants are going to block the sweat glands from even secreting any sweat, and what that's going to do is cause a buildup of toxins. Your lymph isn't going to be able to drain the, the right way, and yeah, aluminum is going to get in there too, and then aluminum can also deposit in the brain, uh, crosses the blood-brain barrier. There's a lot of different things that can come into play with that. So one of the best things I tell people to do, and it's fortunate that we have one here, is that if you have a diagnosis of breast cancer. Get your ass in an infrared sauna as soon as humanly possible. Far infrared sauna in particular can be a great way to actually detoxify those cells so that way you're purging out those toxins, you're, de you're increasing your sweat, pulling all that crap out of the body so that way you can start doing things a lot more naturally. Once a month you do a charcoal armpit cleanse. I think that's fantastic. Yeah, charcoal is great. Betonite, uh, betonite clay is fantastic. A zeolite is another one that's really good for you. Um, but I really truly like the infrared sauna because in my opinion what can happen is we're so as a society I don't know why we're afraid of sweating so if we're afraid of sweating we try to do everything we can to, to layer up or put as much stuff on as possible we, people have even burned off their their sweat glands and their armpits because they're so afraid of sweating in public we're down in Texas it's just a part of like normal, normal society but what I'd like to do is start to say hey your body has a chance now to detox and when you detox sometimes you stink you stink so bad and that's because you have so many toxins that built up over the years that you've just been trapping inside your body that's horrible for you so that's going to be a, an awesome thing so the sauna we actually have um, a three-in-one sauna we have a, a near mid and far infrared with different detox um, settings on the actual sauna itself on the screen inside so that's what I tell people to do, and we're actually running a special um, with that. So if you are interested in that, you can get, just give the office a call. We can get you set up. We're running a special in June. Um, other things you can do. I wasn't, I didn't mean to talk about this, but yeah, nobody wants to stink. It's okay. You stink, and then all of a sudden you get all the toxins out. You don't stink so bad. So, <laughs> so uh, what else? So we have the the deodorant. That's going to be huge. Make sure you're sweating, which is also going to be big. Uh, fix your internal environment as well. So when we go back to um, the the milk that you were talking about there, Jennifer. If we have milk or if we have um, increase in yeast, bacteria, parasites, or something of that nature down in our digestive tract, that is going to be an insult to our immune system. We can actually measure the immune system down in your gut, 
measuring a, a number called secretory IgA or SEGA. So you can do that through a basic panel through one of our offices and we can find out, hey, what is your immune system doing? Is it hyperactive? Is it underactive? Is, are, your, are your bowels moving through? Or are they not moving through? What can we do to nurture one of your most important areas in the body? And that is going back down to your digestive tract. So um, another thing that was a hit in uh, Nashville was <laughs> my advice for people to stop, or for women to stop wearing a bra or try to find a bra alternative so that way you're allowing your girls to move. Why is that important? You actually have a higher risk of breast cancer wearing a bra than you do for getting lung cancer smoking cigar or smoking cigarettes. So I'll rewind that again because I started for a minute. So you have a higher risk developing breast cancer for wearing a bra than you do for smoking a cigarette and getting lung cancer. What about the bra I wear? I don't wear a bra. <laughs> I don't have a man's ear or a bro in here. Um, What's um, Jennifer? What type of question, or what in more detail? What can you uh, kind of specify on there? Like, what what type of bra do I suggest for you to wear? Um, Chris Mack is juicing beneficial. If so, what veggies and fruits? Well, anytime anybody talks about diet, the first thing I tell you to do is make sure you get a food allergy test done before you do it. Number one reason is because if we're working on trying to calm down the immune system, or increase the immune system, or work on decreasing inflammation in the body. We don't want to be putting foods in our body that's going to be causing inflammation. So something as simple as um, an apple. An apple can throw us off. So apple cider vinegar usually is very good for you, but if you have an apple allergy, you're going to want to avoid it. If you're allergic to avocados, same thing, you're going to want to avoid it. So in terms of juicing being beneficial, I would also do a food allergy test and I would also do a stool test on you just to make sure you don't have any yeast overgrowth that's happening down in your digestive tract. If we have yeast down there, yeast is going to grow with increase in fermentation due to sugar. So we'd want to have a, like a berries or like an antioxidant rich kind of uh, fruits so that way we're not increasing your insulin or increasing your blood sugar, causing a spike in insulin and we're making sure we're not feeding the yeast down in, in your digestive tract as well. Uh, but some great fruits and things that you can typically uh, juice. I mean, pineapples are great for you. It helps with stomach acid too. Any type of berries is usually pretty good, pretty safe. Blueberries, raspberries. Um, I mean, the list is, is endless. In terms of veggies, darker the green, the better they are. Um, the darker the veggies, kale, spinach, those guys, collard greens, have phenomenal, phenomenal micronutrients in there. So that way you can boost antioxidant activity alkalize your body a little bit more and it's a lot more gentle on your digestive tract too. So juicing is great as long as we don't have an issue with yeast down in the gut. Um, okay, so us ladies, yeah. So aren't underwire ones bad? Yeah, underwires are one of the worst ones because again, we're talking about inflammation. If we have a wire down here, you're going to be constantly irritating it. It's like constantly walking around with a dumbbell in my hand. I'm going to get calluses over and over and over again because we're constantly causing damage or inflammation to the area. So my body's gonna respond by causing inflammation, fixing it and adding more cell replication, just like a callus. Um, so ones that I suggest to wear, typically I say, well, if you can go, if you're a stay-at-home mom, you can just be free all day. Um, if you're going out to the store, you can wear a sports bra, it's gonna be better for you just because you can still move with that. Uh, the other thing is when they're, the, what they are moving and they are bouncing, you're increasing your lymph flow throughout the body. So it's recirculating those toxins that were basically trying to come out that armpit. You're getting rid of them and getting them out. Um, there is one I've, I've been meaning to look it up. My wife was telling me about it. It has a, it's kind of like a, like a sling more or less. So you still move, but it still gives you, gives you some support. There's something that's going to be out there. I could probably Google it real quick and find something for y'all. But um, make sure, even if you do wear a bra during the day, as soon as you get home, take it off so that way you can let them breathe and move around. Uh, if you need to, stand on a vibration platform to stimulate the, the lymph drainage. Um, rebounders or trampolines are fantastic as well for, for your body. So that way, again, you're recirculating. That bouncing motion is fantastic for men and women. But when we're talking about breast cancer in particular, we're talking about bras, we're typically talking about women. Um, any other questions here? I know I got off on a lot of tangents on this. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Jennifer, you're already familiar with uh, with rebounding. That's awesome. I didn't know what rebounding was for a while. Then I just realized it was. I knew what a rebounder was. It was just a, basically a mini trampoline. So there's there's that. You can do that. Um, yeah. There's. So I mean, if you type in like breast cancer bras, 
Um, you can find a whole whole bunch of bras that are out there um, that are easier, that are uh, more gentle, that cause less irritation, less inflammation on the breast tissue themselves, and that way you can have a better uh, better outcome. So, yeah. So basically, what I wanted to do today is um, just bring awareness to that. Uh, again. If you're somebody who's dealing with breast cancer, if you're just trying to detox the proper uh, detox properly, if you're looking for an infrared sauna, we are running a special this month on it. I'm not doing it. I didn't do this live to plug the sauna, but if you need one, if you need to have access to one, we have one right in the next room in our office. So, uh, with that being said, if you like this information, obviously like it. I have a bunch of likes, hearts. Um, share this information as well because I truly feel like this needs to be out there because I'm tired. I'm, I'll go off a little rant. I'm tired of all this crap being integrated into television shows where people are dying, families are being ripped apart. The only thing that they're able to do is remove both breasts and give you implants and then they try to glorify what happens. And, and it makes me sick to my stomach. And I stopped watching the show afterwards because I was like, this is, this is bull crap. How many women or how many families are watching this show and they're seeing, hey, all I have to do is get them both removed. Maybe I should just get them both removed now before I even ever have breast cancer, which is ridiculous. And then I just get some implants on top of it, so it's it's frustrating. It's truly, truly, truly frustrating. But um, that being said, I'm going to be doing another live on uh, Thursday, and I'm going to be having Dr. Matt Scott on again. We're going to start doing. Um, we might name the show Jock and Stock because I look like a Jock, and he looks like he's from Woodstock. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the topic of foods and how they can influence your autonomic nervous system. So whether that's sympathetic nervous system or parasympathetic nervous system. So we'll give some tips and tricks and some research behind that. Uh, so you're going to want to tune in and check that out. This video is going to be on our Facebook and then I'm also going to be uploading it to YouTube. So say somebody doesn't have uh, Facebook, they do have YouTube, feel free to, to send the link once this is up. So follow us on our page here, follow us on YouTube, same thing, Structured Chiropractic, or uh, I'm sorry, Dr. Jock Moser, we changed that on, on uh, Facebook or on uh, YouTube, easy for me to say. So anyways, uh, yeah, Jennifer, too bad you are in Oklahoma, but I'm sure there's somebody around that can help you out with that. Um, Angelina Jolie needs to be taken out back. She's uh, she's a terrible advocate, and um, she's she's moronical. Like she's, yeah, for women who, who test and they test positive for the BRCA gene, guess what? Pretty much all women have the freaking BRCA gene. That's it. Almost all women have it. About two percent of the women with the BRCA gene actually have the mutation, and there's so there's such simple things that you can do, like taking selenium, to convert that back to the normal way, so that way you don't have to worry about the freaking breast cancer. So, uh, yeah, Matt, Dr. Scott just jumped on here too. So, yeah, Doc, I had a little bit of free time on the schedule. I know you text about that. Did I have a, a light schedule today? I had this little window. And I wanted to make sure I got on here and I promoted this. So, um, anyways. Tune in Thursday. We're going to try to shoot for uh, 1 o'clock again, Again, I believe, uh, with Dr. Matt Scott. If you haven't followed him, he's the wellness way out in Bloomington. And again, we just have a, a fun time just throwing out knowledge. Uh, we resonate really well together. We were laughing about it. I sent him a text about uh, the heart field distance being about 8 feet. He was talking about the butterfly effect. So <laughs> we have that ability to be able to connect even though we're you know miles and miles and miles away. So anyways, uh, love you all. Again, like it, share it. Thank you, Jennifer, for sharing it right now. Uh, Dr. Matt, you better be sharing this too. So uh, I'll talk to you all later. And if there's other topics you want to know about, whether it's on cancer or just nutrition or anything at all, just feel free to leave it in the comment box or just uh, message me on Facebook. And I'll talk to you all later.